Hello, my name is Dmitry Alexandrov and I'm software developer at Oracle working on Helidon project. In this video, I'm going to show you the integration between Helidon and Micronaut. Micronaut is a true masterpiece in the world of microservices. It is very small and very efficient and has a lot of integrations with other frameworks and systems. That's why a combination between Helidon and Micronaut can deliver you a lot of benefits. To do this, several integrations modules were created. The first one is the CDI modules, which allows usage of Micronaut beans inside CDI environment of Helidon. The second one is Micronaut data, which adds support for injections of JDBC connection. You should bear in mind that the integration is done one way only, so you can inject Micronaut beans into CDI beans, but you cannot do the other way around. You still need to use annotations processors from Micronaut beans to be picked by the runtime. OK, let us now create a small demo application to demonstrate this integration. OK, let us now start coding. We will create a small pet owner application. To start, we need actually to add some dependencies. First of all are the Micronaut dependencies, so the regular Micronaut dependencies like JDBC runtime and transactions. The next thing we'll do is add some Helidon glue layer. So there's some integrations specific for that. And last but not least, as Micronaut does its um, associations uh, and uh, annotation processing uh, during build time, so we will need to configure our build plugin the same way. So we are done and we are now ready to start coding. Let us now create our first class, which is actually so-called named DTO. This is just a helper class, uh, which will hold one string, nothing special. Uh, we will need it in our future code for holding some string data. So, um, as you see, we will start annotating the stuff already with Micronaut annotations. Okay, now the specific to our domain classes. The first one is owner. It will be just an entity, regular entity, with regular fields like ID, which will be auto-generated, which will be just long, yep, ID, and I think is, uh, is the name, yep, so the owner has to have a name. We will also add a data like age. Then we will create a constructor for our, our owner and for this we will use specific to Micronaut annotation creator. So only the name will be just enough for that. Yep. Okay. Some getters and setters. Some boilerplate and we're done. The next specific to our domain is the pet object. It will also be just an entity with ID. It will be auto populated since it's a UUID. And oh yes, every pet has a name. One string will be enough. And it has to have an owner, so that's why we will use many to one relation with owner. It's a regular JPA relation. We will also add a type of the of the pet. I'm not sure type is a good name, but let us use this one. So we will for default we'll have a dog. Uh, IntelliJ IDEA will help us create an enum for that. Yes, dog and cat, just few of them. It will be enough for our application. So it will be type pet. Once again, we'll have a constructor for that. Pet will have a name. And it will have an owner. Yes, there's one issue, so this can be nullable. Yes, nullable owner. 
okay well actually not exactly okay I I'm, think I'm used the wrong the wrong nullable so we will use the find bugs norm otherwise it will crash so this is also specific to micronaut once again just you need the fields And this class is almost completed, just to add some more boilerplate code with getters and setters. We will need all of them. So nice that EDA can help us here. So our domain objects are ready. Now we can start coding our repos. So the first one will be owners and it will be an interface which extends CRUD repository uh, to help us automate and not write the boiler code, by the way. Um, of uh, all the CRUD operations, so it provided by default uh, in uh, Micronaut data classes. So we will find all, which will be owners, list of owners. The next thing will be, yes, we have to find by ID. No, it shouldn't be by ID, it should be by name. So you see, sometimes ED help us just too much here. So we will just add string name and find by name and we will uh, annotate it as a JDBC repo with H2 dialect this will be just enough for us and yes some annotations like override and we are almost there yes I don't think yes so there's some two related problems but just because we have already some code um, in our project available it will go away the next thing will be pet repo yeah well pets are stored uh, we will do it a different way so we'll do it like pageable repository with pets uh, and yes pets UID and it should be an abstract class and it will be of course should be a JDBC repository with as we say H2 dialect which will be just enough for us Yes, public abstract list all of the pets that we have, but not exactly pets, the names of them. This is exactly why we use this uh, helper class named DTO, just to, to hold the name. And they should be pageable. Another thing is abstract optional is a pet by name. This time I won't take too much care from my ED and just type it in and but type it correctly and we have the find by name of course we should use the join annotation the persistent join annotation says it's owner yes lovely we have two repos available uh, the only thing we should need is to init the data and that's why we will use um, well, just a population class. It will just help us a little bit. Should be just a singleton. Yes, with some uh, specific to micronaut annotations like type hint uh, to make it work during the startup time. I believe, uh, yeah, there's a specific to micronaut. I hope I didn't make any mistakes with typing here. Yes. Okay. Now we need two of our repositories. One of this owner and the other one is uh No, it's not owner, it's pet. Pet repository. Yep, lovely. We need to uh inject them well so we we'll use a constructor injection for that so during the construction so nice good and now we will init so the initialization will start during a startup event so this is specific to micronaut of course and yes we have an event listener for that so what owners do we want i believe the first good owner will be Fred Flintstone, yes. His name is Fred in string in capital F. I believe his age was about 45. Uh, yes, and uh, 
the second owner, of course, his good friend Barney Robles. Yes, uh, and he's, uh, yeah, Barney with capital B as a shrink. And his age, I was thinking he's slightly younger than Fred, so we'll type 40. And we have these two wonderful pet owners. We have to save them, not add them, but save them all. And just to submit the list of them. Nice. Okay, then uh, we will create some pets. Of course, the first one will be Dino. Dino, no, no, Dino, no. So Dino with capital D. And his owner is Fred. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but my memories are like Fred has them. Dino. Every time he enters home, he tells like Dino, no. The next one is Baby Puss. And we know that Baby Puss is not a dog. Although Dino may be not a dog as well, but but let's consider him as a dog. So Baby Puss will be a cat. Ah, uh, the last but not least is the Hoppy. And this time this pet belongs to Barney. Yep, so Hoppy is about Barney. Yes, the only thing we have to do is just to persist them. Once again, save all, just a list of them. Nice. And I believe we're almost there. So we now have the domain objects, the owners, the, the pets, the repositories. We populate the data. The only thing we need to do is to expose them as uh, resources. And this is the code we already have. Um, I won't try it, so we just uh, fix the imports and we are done. So we can compile it. Let us do it. Uh, it should be really fast. Just 10, 10 files to compile. And we are there. Let us now just Java jar. Oh, there's something from the previous example. I'm wrong. And yay, it worked just from section to second. Let us do some curls now. The first one is just to list the pets. And we have all of them. So nice. Owners, the same way. We have both Fred and Barney. We can take more information about Dino. Who's his owner and what it is. Or we can take some more information about Barney, for example. Yep, he's Barney. He's ages 40. And I will try to do some failure, like create a wrong input. And as you see, our application reacts in a fully expected way. So now we have a fully functional, up and running Micronaut plus Helidon application. Helidon and Micronaut complement each other in a very nice way. I hope you will find usage of this combination in your software. If you like this video, Please don't forget to subscribe and like our channel. More videos are there to come. And below you will also find the links to the examples. So stay tuned. Thank you.